Okay, so let's take a look at a couple examples here to see if you can determine whether either, uh, each of these functions represents exponential growth or exponential decay. I will tell you that they are all exponential functions. Uh, and then we need to be able to identify the y-intercept. Remember from the previous talk that the y-intercept is the initial value. So the initial value, that, that value of a, is the y-intercept for the graph. So if we look at this first one, y equals 2 times 3 to the x. Give me a second to think what might be the y-intercept and whether that represents growth or decay. So to determine if it was growth or decay, we would be looking at the value of b. In this case, that's 3. Uh, since 3 is something greater than 1, this definitely would represent exponential growth. And then for the y-intercept, this initial value of 2 is where I would expect to see this graph crossing the y-axis at 2. Uh, moving on to the next one there, I have y equals 2 times 1 half to the x. Again, I'll give you a couple seconds to think about that. Hopefully you were able to determine that because the b value here is 1 half, which is definitely between 0 and 1, that this would represent exponential decay. And then again, this initial value... 2 here representing the initial value of the y-intercept of the graph. So we should expect to see this graph crossing the y-axis at 2 as well. The third one there, we have y equals 2 to the x. Be careful on this one. I'll give you an opportunity to think about uh, whether that's growth or decay and what the y-intercept is there as well. So looking at the value of b, again, that's what's being taken to the power, that's the base, uh, I see that that is 2, so since that is greater than 1, this is definitely representing exponential growth, uh, but I don't see an initial value there. A lot of times students will miss this question, they'll want to say it's 0, it's actually not 0. I could rewrite this as y equals 1 times 2 to the x, that would be equivalent to that right there, so that makes the initial value actually kind of stand out a little bit more. Uh, the initial value for something like this, when you don't see that value of A written there, it is assumed to be 1. So the initial value or y-intercept here uh, in example 3 would just be 1. And then that brings me to example 4. As my uh, college professor always did very awkwardly whenever he thought it was a trick question, he stood here with his pinky in the air, so I'm going to stand here with my pinky in the air. It's going to be real funny and entertaining and awkward here for a moment. And see if you can determine whether this is exponential growth or exponential decay and what its uh, y-intercept would be as well. Okay, so hopefully you've had time to think about it. Um, this one here is actually exponential decay. You might be looking at me like, what in the world are you talking about? That that's exponential decay. I see a 4. Yeah, there's a 4 there, but I was a little bit tricky here uh, by putting a negative on that. Uh, the y-intercept, definitely 2. That initial, that initial value of 2 there, that's not, the, not, not too difficult as well uh, to identify there. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about that as to why this is actually exponential decay and not growth like most people might be inclined to think. I could actually rewrite this as y equals 2 times 4. Instead of saying to the negative x, I could say to the negative first to the x. Remember your exponent rules from Algebra 1, if you take something to a power to another power, you multiply their exponents. So negative 1 times x here would just be negative x, so I have written something equivalent here. Well now, think back to Algebra 1 a little bit. You had a negative exponent rule. 4 to the negative first power is actually 1 over 4 to the first, or 1 fourth. So by rewriting that, like this, I think it becomes a little bit more obvious that one-fourth is something between zero and one, and therefore making this exponential decay with, again, a y-intercept of two. Hopefully um, that helps. You'll be able to look at uh, some exponential functions and determine whether they represent exponential growth or exponential decay, and you'll be able to identify the initial value or y-intercept as well. Again, just be careful. Sometimes when there's not a number written there, um, people will jump to conclusions. They'll either say zero or they'll just put this number um, instead of remembering that, oh, hey, I could have been written as one times the rest of the function.